I'm sorry my hair is wet, it's like trying to find time to have a shower before or after the class is always a challenge. <laughs> so um, I'm actually going to start uh, standing today. Yeah, so if you'd like to make your way to your feet, we're going to do a, a very easy flow just to create a little bit of heat and warmth in your muscles and then make our way down onto our mat. Okay, so standing at the top of your mat and just have your feet facing forwards, toes forwards and heels in line with toes. Bring your palms together and then press the thumbs into the chest bone like that. Yeah. And then let your eyes close down and let your, your, your face relax for a minute. If you're happy with the eyes closed, just relax into the sensations of your feet pressing into the mat. You could rock forwards and back, just transferring the weight through the toes and through the heels. And I don't know if this makes any sense, but think about lifting up the arches of your feet. So, taking this time just to settle, to let, let go of any last little fidgets or adjustments to your space. Trying to lift all 10 toes up off the floor while keeping your feet planted on the mat. And then lower all 10 toes down into the mat. And keeping your eyes closed, see now if you can lift your heels up. And you might not lift them that high with your eyes closed, just explore it, see how high they can lift. And then lower the heels down. So try that again. Rock into the heels and lift all ten toes up off the floor. Especially the baby toes, that's the hard ones. And then press all ten toes down and see if you can lift the heels up again, still with the eyes closed. Yeah, so it's a little bit harder to balance. All right, lowering the heels down, keep your eyes closed. Just walk into the right leg, into the right foot. And then move your weight over onto the left foot. There. So now take the weight into your toes, over onto the right foot, back into the heels, and then over onto the left foot. Now I want you to go in that circle. Now with your eyes closed, exploring how that feels in your lower legs. Yeah, so can you feel which muscles are, are working to help you do this? Which muscles are working to help you find balance? Yeah, so now you're trying to keep your heels grounded and your toes grounded as you transfer the weight through your feet. Try taking the circle the other way. Don't worry if you take a step back or if you wobble. It's all just exploring, so it's all good. Okay, now have the, open up your eyes and find where it's equal through the feet. Find something solid to focus on. Lean back and try and lift your toes up a little bit higher now. Maybe even lifting up the pads of the feet. And then pressing the toes down, keeping that focus on something, your drishti on something, and start to lift your heels up now. Is it easier to balance? And again, lowering the heels down, rocking back into the heels, see if you can lift the toes up. Keep that focus. And maybe take a step. And then pressing the toes down, see how high you can come up onto your toes. Find that balance. Okay, so now that you're nice and high, try and close your eyes here. See if you can stay balanced. Okay, now you know where balance is. Do you need your sight to stay here? It's very hard. And then opening your eyes, if you're not already, let your heels touch the floor. Good. Pop your hands onto your hips. Now breathe in, lift the chest up, and then breathe out. Start to bend your knees as you lower the, the body down, coming into your forward fold. 
So then put your hands on your shins and push away from the shins, straightening your arms, lifting your head and chest up. Breathe out and then start to fall forward, taking the hands behind your calves and relax the head. Just see how your forward fold feels today. Bend your knees until you can rest your hands on the floor. Step the right leg back and step the left leg back. Lower your knees and then push your hips back into your heels. Relax here for two breaths. Yeah, so breathing in, expanding into your body. And breathing out, drawing your belly button back. And again, breathing in. And breathing in. Looking forwards, come up onto all fours. Take a cat cow, belly drops, lift the head and chest up. And then breathe out, rounding your back, push the mat away. Tuck your toes under, take your hips up and back into down dog. And then start to walk your feet towards your hands. Rest your hands on your shins, inhale, lift the head and chest up, knees are bent. And then exhale and fold it forwards, relax your head. Nice heavy head. Start to roll your way up. Now feel your spine stack, so each vertebra stack on top of itself. Press your palms together and lift your arms up to the sky. Stretch the thighs forward, hips forward. Exhale and fall. Now bend your knees as you hinge from your hips. Hands on the, on the floor or on your shins. Straighten the arms as you lift your head and chest up. As you breathe out, rest the hands on the mat. Bend your knees a lot. Step the feet back one at a time. Lower the knees to the floor, push back into your heels. Take two breaths here in child's pose. Inhaling, pressing the hands really firm into the mat. And exhaling. Take one more breath. Look forwards, one more round, come up onto all fours. Take your cat cow, belly drops, lift the head and chest up. Exhale, rounding your back, tuck the tip. Toes tuck under, push back into your downward facing dog. Wiggle the hips side to side if that feels good. And then start to step your feet towards the hands. Yes, you might not get all the way to the hands, just go as high towards the hands as you can. Hands on the shins, straighten your arms as you lift your head and chest up. And as you exhale, fold it forwards, relax your head, hopefully a little bit, a little bit looser now. Start to roll your way up, you're pushing down through your feet to come up. Reach the arms up, stretch the front. Yeah. Exhale and fold it forwards, hinge from your hips. Hands on the floor or on your shins, straightening your arms to lift your head and chest up. And then exhale, rest the hands on the floor and step your feet back, plank. Lower your knees and then sit back into your heels, into your child's pose. Hold it there, big breath in. And long breath out. Come forwards on to all fours. Take that cat cow, belly drops, lift the head and chest up. And then breathe out, tuck your tail and round your back, push the mat away. Good. All right, bring yourself to neutral and come down onto your forearms. And then we want to hold on to opposite elbows here. And then carefully just walk your elbows away until you can rest your forehead on the floor. And just see how that feels through your arms, your armpits, your chest, and also how it feels through your spine. If, if anything doesn't feel right, make sure that you just come out of it a little bit. 
Otherwise, just breathe and let everything relax here. Notice how the tailbone is high to the sky. So you got all that space through your spine. Lifting your head back up, come back up onto your hands and now into your shoulders. So big circle with the shoulders one way. So they brush up towards the ears one way and then the other way. It's a really nice little movement just to create a bit of heat that's going to let any tension melt away. Now going into your full puppy pose. So now we can take the fingers to the corners of the mat and let the chest sink towards the floor, the chin sink towards the floor. Now, if that feels too deep for you, then you can always use a block, yeah? Or you could put a pillow underneath the chest there. That just supports you a little bit while you relax. If you want to challenge yourself in this pose, then you'll bring your arms a little bit closer together. But it's already big. It's already a big stretch. So be happy where you're at and breathe deep. Good. Carefully start to bring yourself back up. It's good to counterpose everything. So here, push away from the floor, round the back and chin to chest. Good. Coming back to neutral, we're going to rock forwards and lay down onto your belly. Something I've been enjoying this, in, enjoying this week, so fingertips plant on the floor, so it's like a finger stand through your hand. Both, uh, both fingers down, either side of your shoulders, just off your mat. Now breathe in and push through your fingertips, chin to chest, lift up the head, the chest, and feel that stretch through the front of your body. And then exhale, elbows bend, and you lower down, tummy, chest, and head. And again, breathing in, push down through your feet as you lift up lower belly, that's it, lift up the chest, lift up the head, and then exhale, feel the belly rest on the floor, the chest, and then the head. Okay, try that two more times. Inhale as you come up, pushing the feet down. Exhale as you lower down. And again, inhale, push through the fingertips, travel through your spine, and then exhale, lower it right back down. Again, pop the hands underneath your head and rest your head on the hands there. And let the hips move from side to side. Good. <laughs> nice. So, um, from here, catch hold of your block. If you haven't got one, use your pillow again. And you're going to take the block out in line with your right, right shoulder. You can have your head on your left hand and reach your right arm out like you're going to karate chop onto the right block. Uh, sorry, onto the block. <laughs> yeah. Now forehead down onto the floor. Straighten that right arm and push down through the edge of the right hand. And see how that transfers all the way up your arm and into the shoulder. So see if you can really squeeze your shoulder blade down the back as you karate chop the block. Yeah. Breathe in. And breathing out, just trying to find a little bit of space in those shoulders. Okay, from here, the head stays on your hand. Now try and lift your right hand off the block and hold it there for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Can you lift the hand a bit higher now? 2 and 1. Nice guys, lower the hand back onto the block, and then you can bend the arm, shake out the shoulder if you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, you slide the block over to the other edge, and then pop your left hand onto the block, so you're karate chopping on top of the block. 
Forehead down into your right hand now. I want you to push down into the outer edge of that, right, that left hand and feel it transfer through the arm, through the shoulder blade, uh, through your lats. Breathing in and out through your nose. Press down, get, get that resistance into the block. And keeping your head on your hands then, Start to lift your left arm up and see if you can hold it there, just hovering over the top of the block. Hold it there for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Can you lift the arm a little bit higher? 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Nice, guys. Lower the left hand back down. And then bring that left arm in, surprisingly difficult. <laughs> Give the, the shoulder a little shake. So now you're going to pop the elbows underneath your shoulders and use the elbows to prop you up. Yeah, so the elbows are nice and close in. Yeah, they're not far out there. They're squeezing in. Palms down. Lift your chest up. Now push your uh, pubic bone down so that makes your lower back longer and push your feet down. Feel your elbows draw towards your hip bones. Inhale. Just try to work on your posture. And exhale. From here now, you can stay like this or go a little bit higher, just straightening your arms. And again, imagine your hands are drawing towards your hips. Your pubic bone is pushing down. Your feet are pushing down. Inhale. And exhale, elbows can be on the floor if you like. Good. Nice, guys. Nice. Start to let the elbows go out to the side. Lower down the tummy, chest and head. Rest your head on your hands and again, let the hips move from side to side. Let go of any tension that you built up there. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Squeeze your shoulders back. You're going to push back into child's pose. So you're going to sit your hips back into your heels and relax over your legs. Now, for this one, you could take your arms down by your feet. Uh, if you need a block for your head, you can rest your block there underneath your head. But let your shoulders wrap around your thighs there. Mm -hmm. Hoping that feels nice. Yeah, if you need to adjust and change it, then change it. Take a big breath in, feel the belly expand against the thighs. And a long breath out. Good. Walking the hands forwards. Come back up onto all fours. I'm just going to get into the hips a little bit. Slide your right leg back, press the toes under, and then lift your right leg up. You're going to bend the right knee, so you bring that heel into your bottom, and then extend it. And again, bend the right knee, bring the heel into the bottom, and then extend it. Good. Last time, bend the right knee, Bring the heel into the bottom and now start to circle the hip. So a big circle with that right knee. So we've worked on our shoulders, now making our way into our hips. Take the circle the other way. Maybe you feel an unusual click or crunch today. Let's see if we can work around that. Okay, so now bring your right knee to your right wrist, right foot towards the left wrist, and just walk the back leg away. Good. Press into the left foot, lift your head and chest up, and as you exhale, fold forwards. Okay, so bringing your forearms onto the floor, or extending your arms all the way out to the front. Let's see what feels good for you here. Now I want you to push down to your, that left foot. Make this an active stretch. Rather than a yin stretch, it's an active stretch. Good. 
And walking your hands right back up. While your hip is nice and safe there, fall onto the right side and then bring your left leg all the way around. You're going to try and hook it over your right knee. If that's too much, keep it on the inside of the knee. Yeah. Right arm around the left knee, left fingertips behind you. Big breath in. Enjoy this twist here. Okay, and as you breathe out, can you imagine pushing your head back into a wall? And so, so that's helping with your, with your posture there. Good. Coming back to the center, you can take that left leg all the way back. You can use your hands if you need to. And then let your right leg come back into down dog. So we can wiggle out the hips and stretch out the hamstrings. <laughs> and then we can lower the knees back onto the floor. So go into that left side now. Slide the left leg back, press the toes into the floor. And then lift the left leg up. Just feel the hamstring a minute as you draw the heel into the bottom. And then straighten it. Try that a few times, bending the knee and then straighten it. Last time, bend the knee. If you can imagine the, um, the hamstring attached to your sit bone. Yeah, so as you draw this big circle, because we've warmed up that hamstring, hopefully that will help you find a bit more space in this circle. And then take the circle the other way. Again, maybe there's a click there today that isn't normally there. So you can just work around that. Left knee slides to the left wrist. And we move the left foot over to the right. Come into your pigeon. Hand side to side of the knee. Lift the head and chest up. Any problems with your knees, guys, then keep your heel underneath your bum or lie down onto your back instead of pigeon. Inhale. As you exhale, come down onto your forearms and I want you to be active. Maybe you take your arms out in front. So active means you're gonna push down through the top of the right foot. You're gonna push down through either the elbows or the hands if your arms are reached out in front. Pushing down through the outside of that left calf, left, left thigh. And you're breathing deep the whole time to keep it calm and steady. Good. Slowly start to bring yourself back up. Well done. Yeah. You fall onto your left side, you're already there. So just rest onto that left side as you bring your right knee all the way across. Foot can be outside the leg or inside the leg. Left arm around your right knee, right fingertips behind you into that twist. So you can make this twist a little bit more effective by pushing down through both sit bones. By pushing down through the right hand and then leaning your head back into an imaginary wall. Can you lift up from your lower back, middle back and upper back. Inhale. And exhale to twist. Lovely, well done. And twist, come back to the center. And rather than going into downward dog, just slide your right leg out in front and bring your left foot to the inner right thigh. Catch hold of your block or your pillow. Yeah. And then place your block on top of your right thigh. It's my new favorite stretch. <laughs> Inhale, try and lift yourself up, and then exhale, fold over the block. Now you can rest your hands on the floor by your, by your knees, or reach them forwards. Maybe you catch hold of your feet. Mm -hmm. See what feels good. Relax over the block. Okay, so the block is creating a little bit of um, a space for you that you all notice when you take the block away in a minute. You can also have your knee bent here, yeah, so if you're used to having the knee bent, you can bend the knee. Wherever you are though, try and draw your chest forwards. And as you exhale, try and relax over your leg. 
Stay here for two breaths. Okay, so two slow breaths. There's the nurturing class. So these long holds help us to get a little bit deeper into the pose. So some people say that oh, the nurturing class is that the easy class? I think no, nurturing is not the easy class. <laughs> that's where in nurturing we stay in the pose a little while, and that's hard. We should stay in this shape even longer, but it's only a 45 minute class. So if you get a chance to do this class again, when I send it to you at some point, maybe you could pause it and just be in this pose for a little bit longer. We're going to make our way back up now. Take the block away and try it fold forwards again. So breathe in, lift the head and chest up and then breathe out and just see has that created a little bit more space for you now. Inhaling, draw the chest and head towards the toes. And exhale. Good. All right, bring yourself right back up. Getting those hamstrings nice and loosey goosey. You bring your left knee up. Okay, now just take the left foot on the outside of your right leg. Coming back into a twist, right arm around your left knee and left fingertips behind you. Inhale, push down through both sit bones and exhale. Good. All right, coming back to the center, I uh, will extend your left leg out now and bring the sole of your right foot to the inner left thigh. Lift yourself up, press now the block on top of your thigh. As you exhale, fold over the block. If you need that knee bent, that's fine. Bend the knee. But push into the block, into the block and towards your toes. You can catch hold of the edges of the feet and work on bringing that baby toe back. It's that baby toe that tends to cheat and then takes us out with the, the good stretch, the good stuff. Breathe in and breathe out. And of course, if this isn't really good for you at all, then you're going to take the block away and do what feels good. Yeah, but if you can be here for a few more breaths, then do it. Try it. Imagine all this space that you're creating. One more breath. Good. All right, start to bring yourself back up. <laughs> and then take the block away and see, if, have you created a bit more space? Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, fold over the leg. Yeah, it certainly helps for me. See how it goes for you. Inhale, draw the head and chest forwards. Exhale, fold over the leg. Now go start to bring yourself back up. Well done. We'll come back into that twist. So pick your right knee up and now keep this leg straight this time. Right foot over the left leg, left arm around your right knee. And then right fingertips behind you into the twist. Breathe in, belly and body expand. Breathe out and push down through both sit bones so you can twist, twist, twist from there. Good. Coming back to the center and then extend that right leg back out in front. We'll try that in Paschimottanasana. So forward, fold both legs out. Hands uh, lock onto your thigh or pillow onto your thigh. Inhale, lift yourself up. And then exhale, fold over the block. Mm -hmm. Again, you can catch hold of your toes. You can rest your hands on your shins. It might be that the block isn't doing anything for you because you, you're not quite low down enough yet. And that's fine. Maybe pop the block underneath your bum instead. 
Otherwise, breathe in, draw the head and chest forward. So you can do this without a block as well. And breathe out and fold over the block. Then if you let your head go down, then you might feel a little bit more stretch through the spine. But be mindful, be careful. We want this to be in the hamstrings a little bit more than the, the, the back. Okay, releasing, making your way back up. Hands by your hips, inhale, lift yourself up. Now feel the shape of your lower back and try and maintain that as you fall forwards. If that means bending your knees to keep the back straight uh, in its natural shape, then bend the knees. Otherwise, big breath in. Now reach your fingers back. Press the fingertips into the floor. And like a, like a rocket about to take off, draw the chest forwards. Good. Nice. Slowly start to bring yourself back up. Excellent, guys. So we're going to bend the knees, soles of the feet together. Now, we're all going to do this. So have a nice space in between the, like the big diamond shape of your legs and rest your block on the arches of your feet. Inhale, lift yourself up. If you haven't got a block, don't worry, do it without the block. And fall forwards and try and rest your forehead on your block. And then let your hands rest out in front. Again, so if you haven't got a block, it doesn't matter. You just let yourself fall forwards, yeah? If you have got a block, use it. You might not be able to reach the block yet, and that's fine. Just work on drawing the chest forwards. Yeah, but if you can reach the block, you can rest there, just taking a moment. Could create a bit more space by stacking the blocks if you wanted to. But more like yin now, could you let your muscles relax? You know, we're not really pushing away from anything or, or trying to create that strength now. Now we're just trying to let the muscles relax and let the bones um, do their thing. If you feel like that you might be able to go a bit further, you could take the block away and let your forehead move towards your feet. It might not be there yet. Maybe the block is that perfect in between for you. Good. All right, very carefully make your way back up. So another pose that you can stay in a, a little while, you know, if you, if you have time. Squeeze the heels into your, towards your pelvis. Catch hold of your toes. Inhale, lift the head and chest up. And then exhale, walk it forward. So sitting on a block is fine here if that means that your hips are a little bit higher and your knees a little bit lower. Walk your hands over towards the right side. Okay. And as you reach to the right, could your left fingers creep forwards or towards that right side a little bit more? So you're getting that beautiful stretch. Can you feel it from your left fingertips all the way to your uh, left, left hip? Hmm. So from your right fingertips all the way to that left side. And then walking over to the other side. And reaching your right fingertips away. Going as far over towards that left side as you can. Creeping those right fingertips forwards and then feeling the stretch from the right fingertips to the right hip. <laughs> so I've got that roll on the other side.
Yeah, coming back to the center, uh, the moment you've been waiting for, <laughs> start to walk your way back up and shuffle your way to the top of the mat and we start to lay down onto the mat. So knees open, feet, uh, soles of the feet together, rest your head on the mat and take your arms up and over your head. So let your face relax, let all your muscles relax. If you need blocks either side of your knees, then you can do that just to not let the knees go down too low. Take a big breath in through your nose. And then open your mouth and exhale, let it all go. And again, a big breath in through your nose. And open mouth, exhale, let it go. Do that breath one more time, full breath in. Maybe you can hold your, your breath at the top of the inhale. And open mouth, exhale, let it go. Now keep the soles of the feet together. Push into the edges of the feet, hands flat on the floor. And now try and draw your belly button back. So you'll feel your tail will tuck under a little and then push into the edges of the feet as you lift your hips up. So as you're keeping your knees open, hovering your hips up, it's like a, fun, a, a funny bridge pose. Inhale, feel your big toes pushing together, baby toes pushing together. Exhale, see if you can stay there. You're using your block or your pillow, slide the block underneath you so it comes to your sacrum and then land the, the, the hips on the block, yeah, or the, the buttocks on the block. Now you're not on your back, you're on your sacrum here. So it's taking your hips a little bit higher, so getting a little bit more stretch there through the inner thighs and the hips. So if it feels uncomfortable for you, take your block or your pillow away. If all is well, you could, with the arms resting above your head, just let the muscles relax. Yeah, so again, it's like, more like a yin practice, not holding on to muscles, just letting the bones stretch. Yeah. Letting the bones ease. So give yourself permission just to relax here for a moment. So if you did find any knots in your body throughout this class, just imagine that knot, how, how much tension it causes around the rest of your body. Like when you pull on a piece of fabric and, and that, that piece makes a line all through the whole fabric. It's the same with your muscles. If you get a knot or tightness in one area, then it starts to pull the whole body out of shape. It's good to spend this time just breathing, stretching, moving slowly, mindfully to work out where those places are because where you're feeling pain might not be where the problem is. Carefully start to bring your knees back up to the center and press your feet flat onto the floor. Good. Reverse that now, belly back, push through your feet and lift the hips up. So you're getting a stretch through the front of your thighs, front of your hips. And you can slide the block away and then lower the spine down nice and slowly, vertebra by vertebra. Good. Bring your knees into your chest, give them a nice little hug. I like to have my knees separate and one arm, yeah, one knee is in the crook of each of the of elbows, yeah, so each elbow of the knee is in the crook of, and then interlace the fingers and draw the hands towards the chest. Let's see if that suits you. And we can rock from side to side here. Last twist to finish, and squeeze your knees together and we'll drop both knees to the right side. Look to your left hand, big breath in through your nose. Long breath out, belly draws back. 
and then bringing your knees back into the center. And we'll let them fall to the other side. That's it. Enjoying that twist. Looking at your right hand. Big breath in. And long breath out. Releasing, bringing yourself back to the center. And now just sliding your feet to the corners of the mat. Legs straight. Arms can be up and over your head or down by your side. Last big breath in through your nose. It's like a big clearing breath. And then open your mouth, exhale, let it go. So just breathe normally in and out through your nose. Yes, finding a nice, nice natural rhythm. Notice the effects of the practice. Can you let your mind relax now? Whatever's happening for you today is ready for you to, to, to get on with at the other end of, the, of this class. But finish the journey off here first. I like to think of the floor supporting me as I rest in Shavasana. Encouraging me to let go of any muscles that I might still be holding on to. So usually in my glute, in my left glute for some reason. So somewhere like that for you that you're unaware of, that you're always holding on to. That might be in your jaw. Can you let it go? And if there's sounds around you, can you notice that they're there and just put them into the background? It's the same with the thoughts. If the thoughts are there, just notice them and put them into the background. you've got time and you would like to stay there a little bit longer and stay there as long as you like. So if you need to carry on with your day, start to breathe a little bit deeper. Start to bring movement into your toes and into your fingers. And big yawn, reaching your arms above the head, do that lovely full body stretch. And we roll to the right hand side into a fetal shape. Keeping your eyes closed, make your way up to seated. I'm just sitting however feels comfortable for you. And once you get there, just notice how everything feels. Press your palms together, thumbs push into your chest bone. The trick is to remember that you've taken this time for yourself today. So when or, when or if things start to get stressful, just remember you've taken this time to breathe. And all you need to do is to check back in with your breathing. Everything will slow down and calm down. A big breath in. Open mouth, exhale, let it all go. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste, have a beautiful day. Take your time. Just uh, send me a, a message if you've got any questions at all. I hope you feel good after that. And if you're still in Shavasana, then we'll be quiet. <laughs> um, pop anything that you need in the chat, guys. But, um, thank you so much for the practice.